Okay, so welcome to another battle vid. This time, of course, is between the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Galaxy S22 Ultra. This is not going to be just a camera battle. We'll look at other things in this video, some gaming, gaming speakers, temperatures, all that fun, fun stuff. But we're starting off with, of course, the cameras. And this is the front-facing camera, shooting at 4K60 for both of them. We'll check out some more stuff. And I want to give a big shout out to Kevin the Tech Ninja for being my action guy for the action camera shots you'll see later. So let's enjoy. So looking at photos from both cameras, now this is portrait shots, both look good. Now when it comes to skin colors though, one is brighter, Galaxy is brighter while the iPhone is darker. And my skin tone is kind of in between both, but you get to see the differences here. Although every other color looks sharp and well represented. Now, same thing with the front facing camera. I'm lighter on the Galaxy, darker on the iPhone. But when it comes to uh, just shots of you know buildings and ultra wide, I kind of like the Galaxy a bit more, but they both look really, really good. Food shots, Galaxy does kind of turn into food mode and makes it much punchier. iPhone's a bit subtle, but I think the colors again in between both of them. Um, and then we look at, at this selfie shot again, you can see the same thing I was talking about in terms of skin tones and how they're represented. And of course the pizza just looks more vibrant on the Galaxy and kind of dull on the iPhone. Now when it comes to cinematic mode versus, versus uh, portrait video, cinematic mode looks really good, much improved. It's also shot at 4K uh, 24, while the uh, portrait video here is shot at 1080p 24. Both look good. I like cinematic mode more. It just looks more cinematic or reminds me of a movie. Uh, portrait mode is still has a bit to go. Now, here is the big one. Action mode versus super steady. Action mode is just better. 2.8K, 1080p, less shakiness overall, and much clearer image. You can see how steady it is on the iPhone 14 Pro Max over the, the S22 Ultra. Now the S22 also doesn't lose all the video categories. It does have 8K video, which is what I captured here watching this kid's soccer game in my neighborhood. But you can crop in and can still be solid. 8K 24 frames per second. Uh, very nice if you want to capture something that of higher resolution. Night mode video for camera. Both of them are kind of hard low light setting. Although the Galaxy may be brighter, the iPhone is crisper and clearer. You can see more detail behind me, less graininess going on. Now using the rear cameras, I've got my wife in front, she's walking. You can clearly see the iPhone is just brighter and clearer as opposed to what the Galaxy is a bit darker. Just nice representation. You can clearly see her more in the iPhone video, less graininess as, all, as well as opposed to the Galaxy video, which is still clear, but not as clear as the iPhones. Now, when we go to low light photos, you can see here, the iPhone brings a much more balanced white tone while the Galaxy is pulling a lot of that yellow light within the, the restaurant we're sitting, it's also outside. So you can see the Galaxy is more true to live color while the iPhone is making it much whiter because it's a yellow street lamp. But here, uh, this is a 3X. You can see that both of them are kind of similar. And here again, you can see that the iPhone is more white or more lighter shade. Same thing with uh, this photo of me here, and uh, it's just something you have to just pick and choose. All right, so that was an interesting start with the camera comparison, and let me know what you guys think and who you think won that round. Now let's move over to the displays. Both of them have some pretty bright displays, probably one of the brightest on the market here, uh, with of course the Galaxy S22 Ultra being slightly larger just in dimensions. Now, when it comes to uh, peak brightness here, the Galaxy S22 Ultra is at about 1750 nits, while the uh, iPhone uh, 14 Pro Max is at around 1600. But in direct sunlight, it goes up to 2000 nits. And looking at it in direct sunlight, it is absolutely incredible to see how that actually scales up pretty well. And it was nice to see. While the S22 Ultra, you know, does a good job and just not as good there. Now, speaking of all the ways on displays, both devices have very different implementations of that. So you can't, you kind of want to call Apple's version always dim display because you will see we still be able to see your wallpaper your images whatever you have up there plus everything on the screen while on android and on the galaxy devices it 
pretty much is a black background with just the icons popping up or whatever information you want selected popping up. Let me know which one you'd prefer. Now let's go ahead and talk about benchmarks. This one is quite interesting. Now the Apple A, A series uh, chipsets have always been very good at setting some very incredible benchmarks overall. And it continues here with the A16 Bionic. Let's see what we have from Geek benchmarks. Now from Geekbench, right, we're looking at the single core scores. It is 1,861 for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, while it's 1,216 for the S22 Ultra. Now when it comes to multi-score, you see a much bigger gap with 5,401 for the iPhone and then we have 3,429 for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So a much bigger score. Now some of you are looking and going, well, that is from February 10th, 2022. Well, I ran more recent benchmark numbers. It was actually lower for the Galaxy at 905 and 2,939 for multi-score. So not really great. But then again, this is not the latest chipset from Qualcomm. We do know that the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 does a much better job, but we're comparing these two and it clearly shows here. But what does that mean in terms of gaming? Now, I, again, I cannot give you benchmarks yet for the iPhone 14 series of devices just because I can't get a benchmark tool to give me uh, benchmark numbers. But what I can tell you though is that they both run pretty smooth and uh, even playing games like Genshin Impact on the S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you will start off at very high performance and it will scale down over time, especially if you're playing for anything more than 30 minutes. Uh, but that's just been there. In terms of the S22 Ultra, those are the benchmarks I'm currently getting on screen. So you have that as reference. Now, what about temperatures after gaming for such long periods of time? So with the S22 Ultra, we're looking at 105, 106 degrees, which is nice uh, and is much better than the iPhone, which comes in like at 112 to 114 in terms of temperature. So there is at least a good six degree difference. Now, the Galaxy line is known for having its specialized cooling, vapor chambers and all that. Apple really isn't, but those Apple numbers have dropped from last year, which are closer to the 117 range uh, in terms of uh, temperatures. So that's just to put into perspective there for temps for you to give you a lot of sense. Before we round this up, let us go ahead and check out a couple more things. That includes speakers. Now, both of them have stereo speakers and we've done a full speaker test uh, with the full iPhone 14 uh, series devices out versus the Galaxy and the Z Fold. So go ahead and check that out. But just to quickly summarize that for you, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is just better with its speakers. They're louder, they're cleaner, they're crisper. You're gonna get just better audio off it. The Galaxy is good, especially in gameplay when you're playing video games, it's much better, but the iPhone clearly wins in that category. When it comes to charging, you're looking at devices that have uh, some somewhat similar um, charging speeds. The iPhone 14 Pro Max does 27 watts. The Galaxy can do up to 45 watts, uh, but you do have to get specialized chargers. Samsung chargers just don't hit the mark there. But in terms of charging speeds, they are not the fastest on the market. So you're not gonna get any speeds close to say the OnePlus or even devices from Xiaomi or other um, Chinese manufacturers. But you're also not gonna be getting a charger in the box. So definitely go ahead and pick one up because you're gonna need it for both devices. I currently use uh, Speaking chargers. I'm using the Speaking uh, 652. This is the Arc Station. It's great because it does 65 watts. So you should cover both devices for me quite effectively. What features set these two diff devices apart? Well, with the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you have the S Pen, and that is something that uh, has carried over from the Galaxy Note series, has a lot of built-in functionality that does some really cool new stuff. While with the iPhone uh, 14 Pro Max, you do have Dynamic Island, which is something new and different in terms of using notifications, as well as also a what I tend to call a design defect to an advantage. Having that notch be something more reactive, proactive, and functioning really well for all your notifications is a really cool thing overall. So the question now remains, who won 
this battle vid. And I think it's actually pretty clear. I think especially looking at what we got from the cameras, uh, from both devices, uh, I, and also even including the speakers as well. I think the iPhone 14 Pro Max has taken the crown. Uh, even though I do prefer the Galaxy S22 Ultra, I will say the iPhone is feeling uh, just more robust in terms of camera quality, also in terms of just general functionality as well, and longer battery life in terms of what the iPhone brings to the table. So let me know what you think. Do you think Galaxy actually won this round or do you think it's actually the iPhone? I'll leave your thoughts down below. And if you wanna check out more videos about the iPhone 14 Pro Max, we do have a gaming video up, so go check that out. We also have a speaker test as well. And if you just bought one, we'll show you how to set up your eSIM on this device. So this is Thunder eSIM. Thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.